Hey, Rick, going through this whole process and, and articulating it so well for us today, what are your big takeaways? Uh, um, I, I think is, you know, this is an area, I think, especially my generation, I guess, I guess when you get in your 60s, everybody's got something going on and, and it's not unusual for people to have back problems. Um, and there's so many different points of view on how to get after it. I mean, to have two surgeons look at me and say, no, no, your symptoms are being caused by stenosis. And then you go through a therapy session where you're treating bulging discs and you're getting relief. You know, as a patient, you say, wow, you know, you don't want to say, well, the doctors were wrong. I'm not that kind of guy. Um, because I have too much respect for their backgrounds and what they do and, and, and they've got their own success metrics that they're probably very, very proud of. But um, if, if you're a person who has tried conventional methods, because I think for most people, the first call you make is to your primary care physician, right? You say, I got a back problem, something hurts. And you know, the first step is come on in and look, check you out and they give you some pills. And I mean, you know, that's just the model we work with. So in some sense, it was a lot of dumb luck that I even ran in to Susan. Um, but I would say, you know, for people who have been struggling with, with getting well, um, the, the method that Susan teaches, I mean, you know, for, for me it worked, but I do think you have to take that, that leap of faith, right? I mean, we all, you know, sometimes we experience a physical problem and then it becomes a mental problem. And, mm -hmm. and I think we create, and I'm guilty of this, we create these mental blocks about what you can and you can't do. And you find yourself saying things like, well, you know, at my age, and, and, and you just sort of sign up to being somewhat infirmed. And, that, and it's probably not the way to go. Um, I think we've been told that we get to certain ages and arthritis is, is something you're, you're going to have to deal with. Um, the back becomes fragile and so forth. And I think you guys, what you're doing with the methods that you teach is that you kind of turn that paradigm upside down and you, you kind of say, look, your, your back is fine. What you're going through is normal. This is called aging, right? Yes, yeah, so everybody maybe does have arthritis. Maybe everybody does have stenosis. And maybe if you've been any kind of an athlete or you do physical labor, you know, your whole life, maybe you've got some discs that are going to be out of whack and so forth. But that's not a, you know, it's not a death sentence. And it doesn't necessarily mean you have to have surgery. And, um, you know, zero pain as a goal, that's pretty cool. I mean, it really is. I mean, again, I was, I was willing to make a deal. And um, as it turns out, I really haven't had to. Fantastic. Thank you for that insight. Uh, Susan, your big takeaways. Um, I think the biggest takeaway is just to stay curious, right? With his symptoms, the way they were presenting, you know, he had some that were in the stenosis category, which is what he was told all our symptoms were coming from, and then not all of them match. So um, stay curious and just allow the assessment to do what it does and for your body to tell you where the symptoms are coming from instead of the image. Um, and having, presenting that to the patient in a way of them being open to the idea of, hey, let's see if there's anything else that might be causing it. And can we find anything that starts to kind of unlock these symptoms and start to make you feel better? Um, and then I'd say the other one is like when, if you're plateauing, definitely look up into the thoracic spine. I knew I didn't need to go lateral, anything like that with him because everything was bilateral and they were all turned on at the same time. I mean, there was no indication for me to go one way or the other, um, like go into a lateral force. So I felt like that was probably the, the last place I could land to see if I could get any, anywhere. And as luck would have it, that's exactly where we needed to, to go. So. Yeah. Those are my two big takeaways. Absolutely. Well, Rick, uh, we sure appreciate you sharing your story and you're right. It's not uncommon out there. There are millions of Ricks out there who have gone through initial uh, primary care assessment and on to some, you know, conventional treatment and then failure and on to further and more invasive things. And hopefully uh, they, they'll stumble across someone like Susan, just like you have. 
Uh, we appreciate you uh, being willing to share. Thanks uh, to you, Rick. Thanks, Susan, for your insights as well. We appreciate you guys joining the podcast today. Hear the entire episode for free on iTunes, Spotify, other favorite podcast players, or go to mechanicalcareforum.com.